Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tiny Blue Games. My name, of course, is Seesaw Chris, and today we're doing our first look at Black Desert Online. Now, this is a very popular MMO right now, and a lot of people in the comments have been wanting me to play it. I've actually never tried this ever, and what you're watching right now is actually my, uh, well, my second character. I'm not going to lie to you. I did make a wizard first just to experience the game a bit for myself. Uh, needless to say, I made lots of mistakes on that character, and still made a few on this character, so don't worry, there's plenty of mistakes. Uh, but just so I had a bit of a better understanding of how things worked. Uh, but all of this is with the free trial, they offer a 7 day free trial, um, which is great, it allows you to play the game. It doesn't allow you to go, um, I think it blocks you at like level 24 or something like that. I haven't hit that on any of my characters, so I'm not sure yet. But it seems to allow you to do a lot of what's in the game, even though you can't go past that level cap. Uh, and it's seven days, like I said, which starts once you create your account. So if you're going to pull the trigger on it, make sure you wait to create the account right before you can actually start playing, or else you'll waste some time during the download or during the week or wh whatever you're doing. So this is my first real experience with the game. It's uh, in 2017. Uh, there's been both positive and negative things with this game. There was a bit of a pay-to-win scare, which is still up in the air a bit, but I think a lot of people have returned to this game just because they love what the game has to offer, and that's just the depth of the gameplay and the depth of the uh, combat in general. And I'll, I'll talk a lot to that and to how I've enjoyed the game. So what I noticed right away is that graphically the game's quite quite nice looking. Um, it's a very different art style than a lot of the games I played. I mean, obviously Wildstar has a more cartoony look. Uh, Guild Wars 2 has older graphics, but they're more of a painted style. And this has more uh, more console-like game graphics. Uh, obviously, it's released a bit uh, later, so it's got some better graphics. And it does look quite nice, and it runs fairly smoothly uh, as well. The gameplay itself is very nice. Uh, it just teaches you kind of a tutorial at the start where you go around learning how to quest, how to interact with things, how to do this, how to do that. Uh, but the main thing that's interesting right away is this little black floating ghost that you'll see in my screen uh, screen here. And he's kind of like your guide or your, you know, spirit. I, I don't know the full story as I've only played to like level 15 or something like that on my main character. So I can't give you many details on him, but he seems like he's possessing me, like he's kind of evil, um, but I should follow him because he's got all this knowledge. So there's definitely a bit of interesting story going on there. And it, it does interact well with the other characters where they sort of sense that you're possessed by a dark evil, but you're not even sure what this dark evil is yourself. So there is some interesting story uh, storytelling right there. But it is nice because it allows you to sort of immerse with the game uh, and then present a tutorial to the game without getting too sidetracked from the rest of what's happening in the game. And I do appreciate that. So the quest or the uh, class we're playing right now is the striker class. Um, this isn't necessarily the class I found the most interesting or anything like that. I'm actually playing it uh, because it, well, it's the newest class they've added and with adding it, they've sort of added a competition where you know, by leveling your striker, you get rewards. Uh, I don't obviously plan to be one of the highest level strikers or anything like that when it ends, but I do plan to meet some of the uh, leveling ach uh, leveling achievements and getting some of the free rewards, because if I am going to start investing time into this, why not get those free rewards associated with it? So I figured why not give it a try? Uh, I noticed some very interesting differences between this class and the uh, wizard class I was playing, and that's good because it means this game supports different types of playstyles, which you always want to see. Um, you don't want all the classes to feel very similar because that does start to ruin a game. Uh, so for instance, on my wizard, I would go around and collect all the uh, the mobs together, and then I'd launch a big attack on all of them, which would have a larger cooldown. I had to be a bit more cautious in terms of mana and health. Whereas on the striker, I find myself uh, a bit more like not button mashy, uh, button mashy, but you know, a bit more free and just like jumping from mob to mob, uh, doing combos and enjoying uh, the mo the mobility because there is a lot more mobility. So this part right here, let's talk about this actually, because on my first character, getting past this part was the biggest like hurdle ever. And that sounds really stupid considering there's like an actual keypad thing that shows you exactly what to push. Uh, but I'm just used to MMOs where you get a skill, 
uh, and you can drag it down to just a button that you push, which you actually do have the option to do of certain skills in this game as well. But the whole combo system and what it was asking me to do with like, you know, left clicking, right clicking my mouse and holding shift, I was so confused for a little while. And I, I'm not embarrassed to say that. And because if you can watch on my striker here, the second time through, I did a lot better, which really shows that this tutorial is a lot easier um, this way. However, one thing I will say about this sort of tutorial area is that there's like some kid or something who's practicing on one of these target dummies right nearby. And he just keeps on screaming and screaming and screaming. And I don't know why it's there, but it's the worst sound effect ever. Like you're just trying to like figure out how to use this as a new player. And there's just the worst sound and it just continues and continues because he's on a target dummy around here. I, I go check him out in a second here and I'll, I'll tell you guys when I look at him, but it's so stupid. The actual way that the skills are learnt, I think is very good. It allows for, um, obviously the combo plays, but it allows you kind of to see what skills you'll get in the future. And I think that's very important for a lot of these grindy, uh, killing combat based MMOs where, you know, a lot of what you're aspiring to and what you're looking forward to is yes, new gear, new things to do, but also the new skills you're going to get. This is the kid right here. This kid keeps on going like, hiya, hiya, hiya. And it's like the worst thing ever if you are just like listening to it. And it was really weird. Cause like I walked away and and the sound got louder and then when I came to like check him out he was really quiet it's like it's almost like it's an ambient sound that they're trying to like make a combat field feel like you know it's very loud and busy but it really took away from this like little area I it th if this is you know this is one of my biggest complaints right now and it's a pretty small detail but it was just kind of stupid I I didn't like this kid <laughs> um so Let's talk a bit more about the questing. Uh, this little black ghost guy who's with me helps me out and sort of helps me figure things out. Uh, it helps me learn how to use the cr uh, quest path, which is really handy feature. I have a lot of friends who are absolutely stupid when it comes to finding out where to go in games. And this game like shines a blue or blue light. You even have options as to what, you know, kind of tracking device you want to get there, uh, which really helps people find out where they need to go. And then there's the option to actually auto walk there, which I have friends who would absolutely love that. Now, I know this game, as opposed to other games, has a lot more walking uh, and mount running instead of, you know, Guild Wars 2, where you can just waypoint somewhere or Wildstar, where you can, you know, fly somewhere or teleport somewhere. This game is a lot more walking based, but it is nice that they have kind of the uh, auto walk path system. It kind of reminds me of taking like a flight path in World of Warcraft, where, you know, it would allow you to walk away and sort of do your own thing, but it wouldn't force you to like constantly be a part of the travel, uh, which is a nice compromise where it does make the game feel very big because you do have to see that distance. Uh, and I think that's great. So as for the questing itself, the tutorial quests are extremely easy. You have to go kill like, you know, some wolves, some weasels, some this, some that, uh, just like a few of them. And that's actually kind of an issue I have with it right away is that I found it, you know, you had to kill two wolves or three wolves. Like on this game, you literally walk in there and push like two skills and you've killed three, like you've killed five wolves or something like that. I don't know why they don't, you know, start with like 20 wolves or something like that. I know they kind of, I guess, want to distance themselves from the MMOs that do that. They're like, you know, go kill 10 or a hundred of these monsters. But I think that would actually work really well with this game because from what, what what I understand so far is that a lot of the fun in the game is grinding against large groups of enemies and they should encourage you to kill, you know, 10 of these, 20 of these at a time, not just like walk in and kill three of them. I, I don't think that's, you know, as effective questing because what it is, is you get the quest, you run there, which is most of the time, and then you, you know, you get to have fun killing things for like a second and then you have to run somewhere else. Um, and it's not as great. Now, that being said, running on a striker and moving and mobility is a lot more fun than the wizard in terms of just speed. Like you can sprint and then you get a little speed buff after sprinting and like you get a little dash. It's a lot of fun. Whereas the wizard is fun in its own way where you do a bit more of, you know, teleporting and stuff like that. And I'll do a video talking about the wizard and any of the classes I like. In fact, in the comments below, if you have a class that you think is super fun that I should try, because I'm looking to try the most enjoyable class on this game, you let me know because I want to try it. Uh, but right now, the striker I've been enjoying for mobility purposes, and I can't, I can't disagree with how fun it is to move around. 
Now, this black ghost thing, the main advantage of it is that you can actually hand in and get quests while on the go. Now, this isn't the same for all the quests, but it is nice because it does allow you to sort of train at a place and then talk to this person and then just move to a different training place or grinding place instead of having to go all the way back to the city each time. It kind of works like the uh, communicator system in Wildstar where you can just accept quests, uh, even hand in quests which I think is a great system where you don't always have to come running back to these quests, uh, to these uh, cities, to, you know, talk to quest people and go all the way back out and then come all the way back in. It does r remove a lot of that, which is great. In terms of the actual gameplay experience, I found leveling pretty easy. The XP bar is at the very top there. It gives you a percentage and it also skill, uh, scales across the uh, very top. There's like a bar and I didn't notice that right away, but it's it's a nice looking, uh, the UI itself, I guess, is nice looking. It doesn't take away too much from the game. One of my biggest issues, I guess, with the UI is the, uh, the chat box where when you get into the game, it kind of defaults you by checking on all the different channels of chat and you've got like a bunch of different things flowing through there like map chat and there's like I think this trade chat where it tells you things that have been sold and stuff like that which I think will be very useful at one point but right now I don't care about that and it's just it's almost an overwhelming amount of, of knowledge and like chat that's happening and I kind of wish they would uh, default it to not have those chat channels enabled and just allow you to uh, turn them on or just give you a, a brief tutorial on you know how to turn them on if you do want to do that. One of the things I do like about the combat a lot is it sort of puts your cooldowns for the skills up in the middle of your screen so you can kind of see what you're working with. Uh, this is particularly beneficial on the wizard I found where I had you know one skill that had like a two minute cooldown but it would like clear an entire area of mobs so I would really work on making sure that I was gathering all the mobs and I'd have them all you know grouped up by the time the cooldown was off and then I'd use my big skill clear them all out and do it again and I found that a lot of fun now uh, I think the big issue is that I just haven't leveled my striker enough to really get some of those cool skills so I think that's something that this class will have as well um, I just really got to get into it a bit more in terms of how fast the game is moving, uh, I found on my wizard, once again, that I have a higher level on, I was able to get to level 20 pretty easy. I feel the, the XP did start to slow down, so I think it's got a pretty high curve where, you know, you get up there and you and then you start to slow down as you get closer to uh, level 56 and the end game there where the XP starts to really slow down. So I, I, have, I can't confirm that yet. Um, Obviously, I'll make some more videos on it as I start getting into the higher levels, but from what I understand, the the starting areas go by really quick, and I think that's very important so you can get your um, higher level skills that are a lot more fun to play with. And, and that's a, another fun system, actually, is that you can just learn the skills out while you're fighting instead of having to come back to the town every time. Uh, I think that's really allowed me to enjoy the game a lot more instead of... Because I could easily see it being a, a game where you had to go back to town and, like learn and train these new skills every time then come back out it's nice that they allow you to do these things while you're on the go and i think that that's really beneficial uh, and makes it feel like you know you're more off and you're on your own instead of having to come back every single time so that's pretty much my first experience uh on the striker and everything i've enjoyed with black desert online uh, if you guys are playing Black Desert Online, let me know. I know Frost is playing it, and he wanted me to play with him a bit as well. Uh, so let me know if you're playing it. I'd love to know how many of our subscribers do like this game and play it still. Uh, and let me know, what's your favorite class? Because I want to know what classes I should give a go. There's a lot of them that sound really exciting, but I don't know how they play when they awaken or not. So I'd like to know a bit more about that. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.